Well, there's a wide range of, of uh, both human and animal studies that have really kind of looked at those similarities of how uh, dopamine is involved in, in reward signaling, both from a perspective of addiction and also in uh, uh, obesity. And those, those similarities are, are really important uh, to kind of look at in research to better understand and maybe use some of the information that we have from the addiction field uh, in the context of obesity. You know, uh, what we know about uh, uh, this area in terms of dopamine's involvement in, in drug addiction uh, and obesity, my, my previous work as well as the work of others have really kind of demonstrated um, that there is this, this very similar pattern in, in downregulation of dopamine, uh, downregulation of D2 availability, uh, both in, in terms of uh, drug addicted individuals uh, or drug exposed animals, similarly with um, obese individuals and obese animals. And so if you, if you implement a strategy where you can counter that, upregulating uh, dopamine uh, signaling D2, you see a very remarkable uh, decrease in uh, self-administration of alcohol, uh, cocaine and other drugs. This is work that, that we have done in the past. Um, so there is this, this, this very uh, nice relationship between dopamine D2 um, and, and reward and obesity. You know, my, my work in, in bariatric surgery really comes from my interest in looking at the reward pathway in the brain and the dopamine pathway. And so when, when we look at how uh, a technique like bariatric surgery, which is uh, very effective in, in uh, weight loss uh, and is widely uh, used clinically, uh, we are interested in looking at, uh, at that in an animal model, particularly since there have been clinical reports of patients really uh, following bariatric surgery showing an increased prevalence for alcohol abuse and alcohol dependency. And so our work really has looked at in an animal model um, the effects of, of bariatric surgery, gastric bypass surgery on the reward cir uh, circuitry in the brain and particularly with respect to alcohol consumption and alcohol preference. Um, and, and we've shown in, in several studies that um, uh, animals that have been uh, that, uh, treated with bariatric surgery, with gastric bypass surgery, we show the same decreases in body weight that you would expect uh, as we and, and see in, in, the, uh, in the clinic. Um, but then if you give access to these animals uh, in their home cage to alcohol uh, so that they can freely choose to uh, consume alcohol or water, we see uh, a significant increase in alcohol consumption, so, and, and that amount is almost double. So animals uh, 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 that have been treated with bariatric surgery, these are obese animals treated with gastric bypass surgery, show a, a, a doubling of uh, alcohol consumption compared to their obese uh, controls. Um, and we followed that up with additional studies, replicated it, where we had now this time alcohol uh, rather than being absorbed through the GI tract, alcohol was self-administered intravenously through an, uh, through a, an operant uh, response type setup. There again we saw very similar findings in that these animals, when treated with, with uh, gastric bypass surgery, decreased the body weight but there was an increase in alcohol self-administration uh, intravenously. So we believe that uh, when you look at the, the, the literature, uh, you really don't see uh, very high alcohol intake in obese individuals. Um, and so perhaps that ob obesity uh, acts to uh, protect that alcohol dependency, that circuit. And when you remove that or you treat that with gastric bypass or bariatric surgery, uh, some percentage of individuals, those vulnerable individuals, and we really aren't sure exactly the parameters of that vulnerability, uh, respond in a way where they increase their alcohol dependency and alcohol abuse. And so we've been interested in looking at, at, uh, at that in more, in more detail, trying to understand a little bit better the, um, the mechanism involved in this process, this, this you know, behavioral response, and really understanding what might be those vulnerabilities that could lead us to understand which patients might be at greater vulnerability for alcohol dependency. Uh, which, which has been again reported in the, in the clinical literature. Mm -hmm.